I just came across this problem, the limit of sine of pi times square root of n squared plus n as n approaches infinity. And after I'm done with this problem, I'm going to discuss in the future video about the generalized case where I change the square root into cubic root or kth root. And I change the inside polynomial to a little bit something different, something more complicated. Now, to this particular question, the way to approach it is that first we look at the square root of n squared plus n. So we only wish that it were n, therefore it will be convenient. It will be just n pi. But we're not allowed to just replace it with n. Right? But what we do know is that both square root of n, plus, n squared plus n and both n, they both approach infinity. And we also have this feeling that they may approach infinity at the same speed. Right. I want to compare square root of n squared plus n with n. Right, We have this intuition that they may approach infinity at the same speed because the leading term here, dominating degree is just 2 inside the polynomial. Outside we have the square root. So our guess is that the dominating impact What's going to really make an impact here is just n. So that's why we come up with this, this initial thought. So first of all, I'm going to look at their ratio. So the square root of n squared plus n over n, what's their ratio? That is equal to, if I just rewrite n into n squared and take the square root, then we can make the division happen inside the square root. So square root inside here I have n squared n squared first of all over n squared that's 1 and n over another n squared that's 1 over n so really it just easily approaches 1 right. so really they approach infinity at exactly the same speed now even though we cannot directly uh, substitute this with just n, because uh, usually we can do this substitution where we have proper multiplication of two sequences, a n times b n. But here we don't exactly have multiplication of sequences. Instead, we have function outside of the sequence. So we're not allowed to do that. So that's why we have to further investigate those two candidates, their difference. What's their difference? Right. So in the words, what's the square root of n squared plus n minus n? What's their difference? Now, if we can just multiply both the top and bottom by its conjugate, so that's what I mean, the conjugate, just changing minus into plus. So on the bottom, I should have square root of n squared plus n plus n. On the top, when multiplied by its conjugate, all of a sudden we have a difference of perfect square. All we have to do is to square this thing and minus the square of this term. What's the square of this term? Right? Just simply get rid of the square root. We have n squared plus n. What's the square of n? That's n squared. So in the end, we have n squared plus n minus n squared. So n squares are gone. We're only left with n on the top. And then we can divide by n to both the top and bottom. So on the top, I have just 1. On the bottom, what do I have? I divide every term just by n. Again, we we'll just say, okay, divide by here, divide by n squared, then take the square root, combine the square root. Again, we have square root. Inside here, we have 1 plus just 1 over n, n over n, again, plus 1. So easily, when n approaches infinity, this approach 
zero. This is one. One plus one, two. So half. Easily approaches half. Right? So let me just write down my conclusion. In other words, the limit as n approaches infinity of square root of n squared plus n minus n indeed is half. That's my conclusion. And I don't need this result. This is just helps my motivation. So I need this result. So this motivates me to think about whether if I can insert in this bracket, whether I can use this expression, following this expression, and whether I can minus n, no, right? Because it'll change the value of the function. But what we, what I can do is I can minus n pi. Well, if I can minus a multiple of uh, even multiple of pi, then it'll be the same function. Right, same value, it's a periodic function. I can do that. If I can minus some odd multiple of pi, then I have to put a negative sign. So first, let me just have a look at pi times square root of n squared plus n minus pi n. Later, we will discuss the case of n whether it's even or odd. This time I can just simply say pi times square root of n squared plus n minus n after we just take out the pi. Now, this is very obvious. I've proven that the limit of this is just half. So the limit of that must be half pi. Right. half pi and approaches infinity in this case right so my conclusion is that the limit of as n approaches infinity of pi times the square root of n squared plus n minus n is really half pi my conclusion is that. Now I can draw a further conclusion if I apply function of sine, right? That'll approach sine half pi, which is just one, right? Now my conclusion is limit as n approaches infinity of sine of pi times square root of n squared plus n minus n quantity. Can easily approach sine half pi, which is just one. Now, like I said, depending on the n, if n is let's say n is odd, if n is even, then nothing changes. Right? So let's just write down this way. So limit as n approaches infinity of my sine of let's say pi times square root of n square plus n that's my original expression is easily equal to just one when n is even right because like i said uh, because of periodic function right n is some even number so minus an even multiple of pi, nothing changes to this thing, still the same thing, right? Still approaches one when n is even, n is even. So when n is odd, what's gonna happen is that the limit as n approaches infinity, sine of pi times the square root of n squared plus n is this time equals like I said, if we uh, just mod, if you minus or plus some e, some odd multiple of pi, then all we have to is to put a negative sign in front, right? Because remember the unit circle, right? right? Let's just change the sign. 
So negative one when n is odd. 2k minus 1, perhaps, plus 1, or whatever. So, in this case, clearly, we have just found two subsequences that have different limits. Right? Then we can easily draw the conclusion that there's no limit. Because in order for a sequence to have limit, A, uh, let's say if a sequence has limit, then we can draw the conclusion that every single subsequence of the sequence has to have exactly the same limit, that is the original limit. It's like a like a nece uh, necessary condition, a minimum requirement. If the minimum requirement is not even satisfied, then there is no way for this original sequence to be convergent. So there's no limit in this case. But in a but if I'm not mistaken, if if, we, if the question were written like sine square of the same thing, then of course after we square everything, then they're both just approaching to one. Both the even sequence and odd sequence, right? Both approaching one. But that's uh, but that's a different case in a different universe. But, but if the question is really written like this, then there's no, no limit. So now the question is I'm going to discuss in, in a future video that in general case where if I change the square root into cubic root and uh, kth root, of course, we, maybe we will be able maybe add some coefficient in front of... Uh, uh, n squared and everything. Maybe we can, following this polynomial, we can add some n following that. And maybe we can add n to the power of k minus 1 or something like that. And then we can discuss further. Right. Maybe, maybe in that case, still uh, divergent or maybe, can, I don't know. But that's a different story. So the motivation here is very uh, relatively natural, right? This uh, seemingly weird trick like minus pi n, right? We have sine of this thing happens to be uh, happens to be periodic or uh, just at a negative sign here. So here the trick, it's not completely unnatural. I think it's still relatively natural because because it's all motivated by our uh, experience of uh, tons of problems we've done before involving roots, different expressions, right? approaching to infinity, different speeds. Right? Some, some sequences approach infinity faster, some slower. Right? Some sequences have exactly the same speed. Even if they have exactly the same speed, when we take their actual difference, still undetermined. If we are lucky enough, then their actual difference maybe still can approach some constant, if lucky enough. So that's the whole motivation here. 